Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Milley. The purpose of this video is to help educate our patients about the upcoming arthroscopic surgery that's going to be performed. The knee joint is where two of the largest bones in the body meet to create a hinge-type joint. The femur is the upper leg bone, and the tibia is the lower leg bone. The patella, or kneecap, articulates with a groove in the femur. The articulating surfaces of the knee are covered with cartilage known as articular or hyaline cartilage, which provides a cushion between the bones and reduces friction. The knee is stabilized by several ligaments, including the cruciate ligaments and the collateral ligaments. The knee also has a medial and a lateral meniscus, which serves as a shock absorber to further reduce friction and the forces placed upon the femur and the tibia. The arthroscope is what makes arthroscopy possible. The arthroscopic lens is less than 3 millimeters in diameter, yet it has high-definition lenses which provide extraordinary visual detail. A high-definition video camera attaches to the arthroscope, which displays the video on large monitors. A high-intensity light source also attaches to the arthroscope and transmits light through fiber optic cables. The fiber optic cables carry light from the light source through the arthroscope and to its tip where the camera lens is located. This lights the inside of the knee joint for a perfect view. When knee arthroscopy is performed, the knee is filled with sterile water or saline solution. The flow and pressure is controlled by a fluid pump specifically designed for this purpose, which allows a safe and constant exchange of fluid. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, knee arthroscopy was only used to inspect the knee to confirm damage. But as decades have passed, thousands of unique and specialized miniature surgical instruments have been developed. These instruments have transformed arthroscopy into the specialized art form of today. During the preoperative visit, you will be given a prescription for physical therapy. Please call the therapist to make sure an appointment is scheduled two days postoperatively. At the preoperative visit, you'll be given a prescription for pain medication that will need to be filled prior to your surgery. This way, the medication will be available for you when you return home postoperatively. We will ask that you come to the uh, hospital approximately two hours prior to the time of your surgery. We will ask that you will please be on time as we make every attempt to accommodate people's schedule and be respective of everyone's time. We will ask that you take any medications that you routinely take in the morning at approximately 5.30 in the morning with a sip of water. For example, if you take blood pressure medicine, we want you to take all of the blood pressure medicine. If you take any diabetes medicine, we will ask you to take one half of the diabetes medicine in view of the fact that you will not be having any food after midnight. So to repeat, there's no food to be eaten in the morning of surgery. There's nothing to be eaten after midnight. We will take all of our routine medications, blood pressure medicine, thyroid medications that we normally take in the morning. We will stop taking any aspirin, blood thinners, supplements, etc at least five to seven days prior to the surgery. If you're on any special blood thinners such as Coumadin, Plavix, or Xeralta, we will review that with you individually prior to the surgery as different patients require different dosages with, the, with respect to the blood thinners. If you're on any type of diabetic medicines, we ask that you take one half of your normal diabetic medicine, again, at 5.30 in the morning. This, again, is due to the fact that you will not be eating any food. Upon arrival to the hospital, we will greet you prior to the surgery. You will be asked five times, I repeat, five times which knee we're operating on. This is so as we obviously do not operate on the wrong knee. This, please do not put any marks, arrows, smiley faces, pictures of your children on the affected knee. I will, I will be the last one to ask you which knee and I personally will mark your legs so we know as which knee that surgery is going to be performed upon. 
The surgical procedure will take approximately 45 minutes. We perform general anesthesia, but we call it a light anesthesia in that it's not like heart or brain surgery where the operation takes six, eight hours and you're essentially in a coma. This is closer to like a colonoscopy where it's a light twilight type anesthesia. The procedure takes about 45 minutes. We then will bring you to the recovery room where you will spend approximately two hours uh, re recovering. When should we leave the recovery room, you will be given a pair of crutches or a walker, whichever you prefer, so allow you to walk on the leg. You can put 100% of your weight on the leg immediately after surgery. We want somebody to drive you home from the surgery. You're not allowed to drive home the, after the initial anesthesia. A friend, family member, or even a taxi must bring you home the first day. For the first 24 hours, we want you to remain at home resting with your leg iced and elevated. We want the leg elevated at approximately 60 degree angle. An easy mnemonic is toes above the nose. This requires a minimum of four to five pillows underneath the foot, so the foot is above the, the nose. We will get, send you home with an ice pack. We will also give you a blue instruction a pamphlet from the office that will review how to ice and when to ice. We typically, for the first 24 hours, would like hour on, hour off, as much as possible. This is not a strict rule, but this is something we'd like to do. The following day after surgery, you will be allowed to walk again with the crutches. You will be on the crutches for three days. You can do simple, easy tasks. You can drive. You can go to Publix. You can do simple things. We do not want your leg down in a dependent position that is sitting in a chair, at a restaurant, at your desk for more than one hour continuously. You will begin physical therapy typically two to three days postoperatively. At the physical therapy appointment, the therapist will change the initial dressing, will re reapply new bandages, will uh, examine your leg, and will begin you on a physical therapy protocol. Physical therapy typically takes place three times a week for about three weeks for a total of about nine sessions. At the end of the thigh bone is cartilage known as articular cartilage what we also call the aging cartilage. This is where we, as we all age, we develop arthritis and there's wear and tear. During the orthoscopic procedure, I cannot, I repeat, I cannot repair the cartilage. I cannot turn back the clock. We have other techniques and other methods that will be available to us down the road once we heal from the orthoscopic surgery so as to help the articular cartilage, the wear and tear cartilage, the aging cartilage improve and turn back the clock. We will schedule a post-operative visit 10 days post-operatively. At that visit, we will remove the sutures, we will examine the wound, we will perform a physical examination of the knee. We will then review your progress that has been made to that point during physical therapy. You typically will not be allowed to return to any type of sporting activity for about six weeks. If you're progressing well in therapy, you will be allowed, though, to begin light jogging at a treadmill at approximately two to three weeks. But again, everyone is different and everyone is individual. There are no absolute rules with respect to the type of therapy that's being performed and the speed at which somebody will recover. For more information, go to our website, mealyorthopedics.com, and go to the video page, and you can click on and see the exact surgery that is going to be performed.